Welcome everyone to the Dreamland. Uh, my name is Jim, your host. It's good to be back after uh, quite a bit of time away. I'm joined uh, by Dark Horse and Low Power. I'll have them introduce themselves, Dark Horse. Hey man, I'm Dark Horse. What's up? And then we also have Low Power, who is a player from New Jersey. New Jersey. Tell us yeah, what's up, everybody? Yeah. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm I'm Low Power, I'm just like an online player. Let's Go was my first tournament, and yeah. Yeah, so we're here talking about Let's Go. Uh, quite a bit to talk about. Uh, obviously, big thing that people have been talking about has been the waterfall tournament format, uh, which got its start at Keystone and then has been, uh, this is like our first major to to really get that, uh, you know, proven in a bigger sense. Um, now, now, Dark Horse, you helped to run the tournament. I mean, it was you and Shears that were, you know, the uh, the TOs of the whole thing. Uh, can you kind of tell me why you decided to go with that? Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, first of all, Shears is really the guy that is, like, running the tournament in the bracket and creating all that stuff. I just want to throw that out there. Um, I'm a minion. But Waterfall, because it gives people – more opportunities to play. I think that's like the big theme with it is, uh, sure. you know, you're not going to go 0 and 2. You might go 0 and 11, uh, <laughs> but you're not going 0 and 2. You get to play a lot more matches, but in addition to that, you get to play against people that are uh, at similar skill level to you. That's another huge benefit to this. Yeah, that's actually really interesting because I was talking to Dark Gentleman who kind of defies the original Waterfall Tournament format for, for Smash. And uh, he was saying, like, it's customizable, but the whole idea is you play people kind of at the same level to, as you. Uh, and he was talking about you could even do double elimination the whole way. You don't have to do, like, you know, round robin or anything like that. Um, which I thought it was kind of interesting because that's, that's essentially, you know, floating your top players to much further in a bracket, uh, which normally would be really upset about, but it seems like everyone's pretty pretty happy about it nonetheless yeah you could you could do it for double limb but yeah, that's the, the chief complaint is what you just outlined like that feeling of just like giving top players like this massive buy yeah i think it's well, i don't know i think it's funny because it's like um we talk about like oh this game like games are unbalanced you should have a game that's really balanced but we kind of like when things aren't Turns out we like things that aren't balanced necessarily, right? Like we like the diversity of characters and whatnot. And just like we like, just because it's not a, like Waterfall Tournament is not, uh, I don't know. We You can say that we float top players to a certain degree, but turns out that's kind of what people like. <laughs> yeah, um, and I mean, it's, this isn't, did it with the round robin uh, divisions and everything. It's not. It's not really like you're floating the top players. Like they played in their placement pool, like they would mm -hmm. normally, and then they played in bracket, like they would normally. The only difference is uh, the players that would not have made it that far. They got to play more up to that point. So it's it's not really like you floated anybody that much. Yeah, it wasn't that. I mean, bracket. I didn't really feel that. Actually, one thing that I, I can say is that normally. Uh, <laughs> Normally, I would look at the seeding of a tournament and get really upset. <laughs> like, I can't believe they, they, they did this person like this, this person like this. That's unfair. Uh, but, like, I didn't really even care that much because it's like, oh, you either make it out or you'll get backed up to where you should be eventually, right? Right. Like, seeding seating is still important, but it's not nearly as important. Right. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um did you notice, so I guess you got out on D1, so maybe you didn't have any, I don't know how much you were watching other divisions, I guess you were streaming. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I only watched stuff that was being streamed. I, I can speak to kind of my experience with, because I was in D2, uh, it felt like there was different characters in different placement pools, or in different divisions. And if a lot of people were like, yeah, I had a, like, my bracket was all this character, all this character. <laughs> So I, I, and I definitely ran into that also, but 
I think the reason you never really saw that before was because people just didn't play as many matches. Mm. Like, instead of just losing, like, playing three matches and being done, where you couldn't really say anything, like, you could have been like, oh, yeah, I played, you know, three Falcons. But, yeah. like, I mean, okay, you know, whatever. There's a ton of players at this tournament. Odds of you playing three Falcons are pretty good. Yeah, that makes sense. These pools, getting the opportunity to just play way more players, um, you just you got a wider, like, array of options. Because... Did you also want to talk about, so, in terms of, like, sorry, as soon as you said wider options and, like, uh, and whatnot. No, go for it. Uh, we had different double stages. Yeah. Can you talk? Because I didn't, so I, I wasn't in doubles at all, so I didn't really get to experience that at all. Uh, can you kind of talk about it? Like, what, I mean, we had a few different new stages. Do you want to? Okay. So, uh, ever, I mean, ever since we, we got these extra 19xx stages, I've wanted to use them somehow. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of backlash in the community about using them because they're not as accessible to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. That point is starting to, not hold as much ground as more and more people get ever drives. I think mean, we just had 50 people buy them recently. Um, yeah, with that like mass drop style. Yeah, I, I just I saw doubles as the best opportunity to kind of inject these new stages into the competitive scene because uh, you just won't get as much complaining about doubles. Um, yeah, people don't even practice. And I also thought that the new stages. <laughs> I also thought that the new stages might give opportunities um, for new characters to emerge and be more prevalent just because each stage has like different advantages and disadvantages. So the stages were... Uh, so I, just, I wanted to... Um, so this, this tournament, you know, one where we could control the rules um, seemed like a good time to experiment with that. Yeah, I think that's that's... I think you did it in a smart way, right? You're going to get people really upset if you have, like, one of the biggest <laughs> tournaments of all time. Yeah, yeah we, we wouldn't do anything <laughs> like that. But I think Snowsa is going to do it, too. They're also going to do four stocks. But mm -hmm. this, like, double seems like a good place to test some new things out. Um, not that I don't think doubles is competitive. Like, I love doubles. But you just, you're not going to get nearly as much backlash. Yeah, you don't have, I mean, you don't have many people that practice with their team's partner statically like i mean you and bark do but uh and kevin you know low power was practicing online with Pertle before before the tournament but i mean like i put last doubles tournament i entered was me and fire blaster and it's not like we <laughs> i mean we practiced that i, I think you're right so. most people don't like practice with their teammate i mean to be honest i don't really practice with bark we just play at tournaments sure um, so but but i do at least i have a consistent teammate yeah, exactly. So we're, we're used to each other. Um, some people do practice a lot, and I think the people that do, it's mostly online players that practice doubles a lot. Yeah, yeah me, I wish we did. me and Perto practice a, a bit. But, um... What do you think I of the think stages? I think it definitely... As far as the stages go, I personally wasn't a fan. But just because, like, I'm a purist, I love Dreamland. I don't really like much else. Um, one thing that was cool about it, though, was, like, the counterpicking and how, how you choose your characters. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going Samus the whole time, so we were just, like, banning FD the entire time. So what I mean, that, yeah. Another thing I thought the stages would bring out would be, like, another kind of level to the game with the counter picks and maybe picking different characters and that kind of stuff. So I, I, think, I think most people just went Dreamland only, just for familiarity. But you did see people start to counterpick other stages, um, especially like Team Mexico was doing it a lot. Yeah. And there was one match. It was, um, man, it was Mr. Sir and Joshi. And I forget who they're playing. It might have been Team Mexico. But after they had just <laughs> lost one or two games, I went over them and I was like, hey, take them to, uh, take them to Yoshi's. Because it's different and it's weird and you could probably steal a game. Um, and they <laughs> did. They actually won that game. And then after that, they weren't able to go back there. But it it throws people off. It's like, won't happen as much. You won't get that factor like, oh, he threw them off by changing stages because people get used to them. 
but it's still it, it changes the game a little bit strategies change characters change so i yeah. think it's a good idea overall overall I, I agree i think it's good if you want to see like different characters being used like if you go to a map with a, a stage with a short like a smaller blast zone sometimes you'll see like people whip out the luigi to get early kills and things like that so it's right. definitely interesting yeah, so you could you could do you could ban stages right if it was was that best of five too you could do bans. I think it's just yeah you always had a ban. Hmm. Okay. I was uh, I was talking to some teams that were uh, like Nes Khalifa said oh I'm just gonna always ban Dreamland like I just mm -hmm. want to hit him with that mix up. <laughs> um, but yeah when I looked over and kind of near the end was it doing that okay <laughs> like. I looked back at the end and it looked like it was mostly Dreamland, so that's a bit I don't know. A bit I think top three, top three. I saw different stages. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah I, um, like overall, overall, I think you're right. Overall, uh, people did mostly go Dreamland. Yeah, people kind of picked me to like Congo and Yoshi's. It was definitely like really, like a. It was really weird because I'd never played those stages as far as doubles go. I'd always play Dreamland online. Uh, so yeah, did you think that there was any issues with uh, with the new stages? Like anything? I mean, there. I don't know. There's certain issues with like Congo and and, and singles with the camping issue, and and I feel like Yoshi's kind of has that same issue with that that you know the middle part is really yeah. Strong. I mean, you don't. I feel like you don't see the camping issues as much in doubles just because there's so many players on the screen and there's a lot more going on. Uh -huh. Yeah, I agree. I don't know about you guys. I've never once seen a doubles game go to a timeout. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm with you on that. I mean, to be fair, we've only seen how many timeouts. Actually, I don't know, man. I've seen I've majors seen and locals. Timeouts. I mean, it's not like there haven't been timeouts. There's been a bunch. Um, but yeah, I've never there's seen a, a double. There's a Kirby did a timeout. I don't think it would happen in doubles. Yeah, people I, are I like so, so eager to combo the other team when it's two on one. Yeah, that's true. And it's like the last stock of doubles just kind of dissipates, it feels like. 1v2 is so bad that, I don't know, it's hard to, hard to like have a really long life at the very end like you could with a singles game. Yeah, and I, I know one of the issues with Congos is actually the color. And before doubles started, I adjusted the settings on the TV a little bit, um, and it seemed... Like, I'm not colorblind or anything, so I'm not the best judge on how easy it is to see, but it seemed better. That's good. I'm, this, is a, this is a discussion for another time, but I think we need to yeah. be setting down some real real rules for, for teams' colors, because it's, it's a nightmare if you have, like, two Marios, red and blue. And then Dude, like red and blue teams. Mario is so messed up. So I messed don't up. understand what Nintendo was thinking. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of funny, but, <laughs> but it's so bad. <laughs> Um, okay, so doubles. I mean, was there anything weird that happened in doubles, though? As far as I results went, I mean, it didn't. Uh, yeah, I can't remember anything. I did take out Shears, so I'm excited oh, about go. that. I got my notable nice. win in doubles. Yeah, <laughs> dude, Shears is good in doubles. It's so hard to like admit that Shears is good. But... Yeah, I have the hardest time since he sucks, but yeah. <laughs> but he does well, man. I don't get it. Um, he does. That's crazy. Uh, so yeah, but there were some notable matches that happened in singles, and actually we can even go so far as like some of the side events, uh, real quick. Yeah, I mean, so much happened. So yes, yeah, uh, start wherever you want. Uh, draft crews, what a great place to start. Oh jeez. Do, do you guys remember, remember who so won? Little. Do you guys remember who won draft crews? I think Revan. <laughs> yeah, Revan definitely won that for all of us. Oh man. Yeah, Revan went and slept for like ten hours. Right after. And then got up and just won draft cruise. So so true. So I was on Revan's team in draft cruise and uh we told him that he could only he was like, I'm tired, I wanna go to bed and we're like, Revan, you can go to bed once the crew battle's over. If we lose, you have to stay for the entire time. But if we win, you know, then you can go home. So you can control how fast how fast we're gonna be done with this. <laughs> And he's like, all right, I'm just going to kill all of them. <laughs> We're like, all right, let's go, Revan. <laughs> like, so the very last match, 
he takes out the entire opposing team and draft crews. Like nobody yeah, else had to go in. <laughs> yeah, he just he took all twenty four stocks. Like <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, draft crews are fun. They started a little bit late, but. I, yeah, I we had, had a lot of issues with the venue, and that's why draft crews started late, mm-hmm. um, like hours, and yeah. But in the future, I think that's the way to do it, like a live draft, and then just go, because um, then you know who's there. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Who, who was there, and, and as people were drafting, we were able to tell them, like we were able to like add or remove people from the list because we knew they, they hadn't checked in. Right smoother yeah i think we we might have done one too many people on the draft crews just in terms of like like we did a snaking draft system mm-hmm. where it uh you know you say there's five teams you know first team goes and it goes all the way to the fifth team and then they pick two times and it goes back for yeah time. it's one two three four five five four three two one exactly uh but we had like an odd number of people that could be drafted so it messed things up <laughs> i don't know Weird. Whatever, it was fine. Yeah. Um, but that was fun. Uh, YOLO happened. Uh, your boy lost real quick. I got hit by... Uh, I hit hit three times uh, by a hammer. <laughs> I was done. Ouch. That'll <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah, <laughs> YOLO was cool. Uh, Tacos, of course, got his, his almost main Donkey Kong and went on to win that. Because well, you, can't, you can't win with your main, right? Right, you can't actually win with your main. Um, it's it's a curse. Only Kimmy Maru ever. <laughs> oh, did he? Dang. As Mario? Yeah, he won Snow State YOLO with Mario. That's pretty good. Um, and then Low Tier Tacos won also. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Low Tier, again, Tacos able to use Donkey Kong, so he just oh, like cruised cool. all the way to Grand Finals and then played a really close set. I think it was 3-2 uh, with Alvin. Who did, he, who did Alvin play? I think Alan played a couple characters, but I think he finished with Ness. Mm. Bad matchup. I don't know, man. Ness can combo <laughs> the crap out of DK. Yeah, I don't know anything about low tier matchups. <laughs> like just, uh, yeah, it's a bad matchup for somebody. Is all I can tell you. Uh, and then the big one, singles. So singles lasted all day Saturday, and then also Forever. all day Sunday. Uh, and we had, okay, well, we can talk about the good one, right? Quapples. Oh, uh, yeah, Quapples. All right, so first of all, for singles, Twin Pools, and then Division 4, Division 3, Division 2. Yeah. Division 1, which was the top 40. Um, so this, the way we did everything, you know, we had our placement pools, and then based on where you ended up in that pool, um, you know, like that graphic you saw earlier, you went into divisions. Um, Quapples was a 12-year-old competitor from Northern Virginia that goes to the cave. He uh, ended up in division four after placement pools. I think he either lost all or all but one of his matches. So he went to, uh, yeah, went to division four and then beat a bunch of people too. Uh, it was pretty awesome. Uh, he made, you know, EMG play of the week uh, with his ridiculous Kirby combo slash edge guard thing on Koro. Um, he almost beat James from Australia. That was a really close set. Um, his parents are there, like, cheering him on. Like, all the Virginia people were freaking out. Yeah, Quaffles is definitely, like, the story of the tournament. <laughs> Dude, Quaffles is, Quaffles is, like, one of the funniest players I've ever talked to. He's so intense also <laughs> when he plays. <laughs> yeah, he kinda kinda moves around. I like I love I love playing him. Uh, I probably told everyone that was that I talked to at the venue uh about this, but I was I, I sat down or he sat down to play with me, um just some friendlies. And like you can see that the like when Wispy blows, uh he he was on the edge and he's like, wait, 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 let me show you this real quick. In the middle of the game. I'm like, all right, what's up? And he's like, I call this wispy dashing. And he just does the like normal get up, wispy blows them off. Normal get up, wispy blows them off like four times in a row. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I'm really was pretty hilarious. That. He did a bunch of commentary too, which I haven't really listened to. He, he oh, also had a, he had a really close set with Horby 
the Kirby player from New York. Really? Come and, on. Kirby's good. Yeah, I was actually recording it on my phone, and everyone was, like, going crazy because I, I think Quapos won the first game, if not the second. So, yeah, he won the first game versus Horby, and, like, everyone's crowding around. You got the, the people from his scene, and then, like, other online players also, like me, Pirtle, were watching, and... I could just tell, like, the look on Horby's face. He was so worried that he was going to lose to this kid. <laughs> wow. The yeah, whole... so that, that, was, that, game, that match was 2-1. to one, So, Quapples yeah, the game. The, the entire crowd was for uh, Quapples. And then on uh, Horby's right side, it's just the dark gentleman. <laughs> one yeah. person. Dude, that's rough, man. <laughs> I heard, I, like, heard all of that going on. I was just, like, behind my little table. Uh, I didn't know that was the match there. That's so awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. I, was I both, of them, uh, both of them use GameCube controllers. Yeah, and they also use the same color, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, both yellow. So hey, I was recording, I was recording their game. Where they get both use the same color? Oh uh, no, well I'm just saying they both use the same color, but I don't think they did in that set. Are you lying? Um, was against it. <laughs> That's super funny. I mean, that was a really like, good set though. <laughs> Dang, so he was doing well. Uh, on the other hand, Revan did not do as well in singles as he did in draft crews. No. He used it all up. I know. I feel really actually kind of guilty like that we kept him up for so long. But that, I mean, he his matches... Oh, I'm losing you a little bit, Dark. Oh, sorry. He didn't. He didn't lose in placement pools, did he? He lost in the bracket. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, he lost. He lost. Oh yeah, so he, he lost had a, he had a whole day to rest. Oh yeah, I don't know what was going. On. Yeah, I felt bad because he was he was looking really good. Like he beat Dexter in in uh, in draft cruise. Like, Wait, who is that? Dexter... You're who is that you're talking about right now? Um, Redden? mostly in singles, oh. but like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was a. Uh, and, like, afterwards, Dexter was like, oh, my God, I didn't know what to do against Revan. Like, he was beating me. And, like, that's not something that I don't think Dexter struggled with him before. Um, but, yeah, he lost to Janko and then Shalaka. Shalaka, yeah. That's a bummer. I like him a lot. Yeah, I'm, I was really surprised he lost to those two Pikachus. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I think uh, it surprised me that much, he... like... He beat like seen, he beat stranded Pika. And... I've seen Janko take games before, so that's why it didn't surprise me too much. Do they play each other? I know that they're both Canadian, but are they from the same? Apparently, Janko is like Revan's apprentice, kind of. So it makes sense that he could pull that off, despite not being like on the same level as Revan. But yeah, you can't like... taking credit away from him. Obviously, he still played great. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Well, he did. He he went pretty far. I forget what his exact placement is, but I'll probably just look it up real quick. Oh, he got ninth. Jenko did. So yeah. <laughs> that's, I know. That's I know. Club was like, "How did he beat Revan?" <laughs> Club needs the secret, man. Dude, dude, Revan hit Clubba with the Clubba Dava, and <laughs> Clubba needs to learn the secret to take a stock against Revan. Oh, dude, that's it was rough, man. I think that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> um, so then we also had who else did we have? We had some good people come out. Um, we had a whole bunch I mean, of Josh, online Joshy people. came out. Oh, Joshy, yeah, yeah, yeah. From so is he Peruvian or is he NorCal? What's what's going on with him? Because he's, I, he's I, from he's he's Peruvian, but he lives in NorCal now. Okay, and he had to he had to leave. Did he play all of his matches? Uh, he, he also, I don't know if he actually played. He, I think he played the Z, but it was like. Really quick, off to the side, like wasn't recorded or streamed or anything because he had to leave. Yeah, but um, that's uh, I did watch a little bit of it. I think Joshi did take a game, and in, what it was well, recorded as. Yeah, and like the games are pretty close. He was just given the Z a tough time, but I think Z towards the end he just started running away with it. Damn, well, that's that's pretty good. I mean, I don't know, like last time that we had somebody that was going really far and then lost to the Z, that was. Derek. Derek's real good. Yeah, Derek's pretty good. And who did Joshi beat? I know he took out... He beat me, and then um, 
he might have played Bark after me. Yeah, he beat out Bark. I don't know who he played after that, though. Because I think um, he played yeah. someone after that before the Z. I just don't... I say I don't have the bracket up, but it's actually, like, right in front of me. Um, no, it was just... It was Bark, and then... Because Bark got seventh, yeah. and he got fifth. Yeah, whoops. That's the low the tier bracket. So, yeah, he beat you. How'd you do at the... Uh, I guess, how did both of you guys do at the bracket or a tournament? At the what? Like, how'd you do in, in uh, singles? Oh, really bad. Um, Sunday, I lost every game that I played in singles and doubles. <laughs> well, you have T.O. John, too. I was talking to the Shears at the tournament. Uh, like, when it was done, he was like, ah, I played I played poorly. And we're like, yeah, I mean, it's like T.O. John's. They're legitimate. He's like, no, T.O. John's don't exist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't remember that. As much as he says that, like... <laughs> They're so real. <laughs> yeah. We were both, he was we smiling were while he was dead. saying that. Well, so he, knew, saying, he knew it was definitely real. And then he was like, they don't want to like, admit it. Well, he kept on like walking himself into saying like Tio Johnson is like, no, I just played poorly. I mean, I just didn't get that much. Well, uh, no, I just, I just didn't play well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you realize that like everything you're about to say has to do with <laughs> Tioing. It's Phillies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That yeah, I cool. think, but me and Shears combined. Hours of sleep for the weekend. Like if you put the two of us together, so that was good. Yeah, we had. Oh yeah, we didn't. I didn't do well either. I didn't have any excuse. I just didn't do well. Uh, I did so. okay, I guess. I didn't really. I didn't do what I wanted to do. I wanted to get top eight, and I ended up getting thirteenth. I lost to Caesar, and I lost to Joshi. Oh, yeah, that was another reason I was surprised that Revan lost to Janko is because Janko lost to Caesar, And, I don't know, that just surprised me a little bit. I think Wait, it was Caesar really close, got... though. It, I it think was, Janko was, Caesar was, was really close. Yeah. Caesar only got 17th place? He yeah. lost to Shalaka in the Z and then Shalaka, I believe. Oh, Shalaka lost, like, Yobo. right away. Yeah, okay. Which was, yeah. which was crazy. I don't think anyone expected that. Yobo Light expected that. <laughs> and then I ended up beating uh, Yobo Light, so it was like a full circle. So it's really like you me. won the tournament, is what I'm hearing. I think um, I think Shalaka <laughs> ended up placing ahead of me anyways, though. I think he got ninth, maybe? No. Yeah, I That's think he right, did, because yeah. he was further in winners. Dang. Well, that's kind of crazy. Of course, of course, somebody's gonna point to this and be like, "We'll see." The bracket was uh, bracket was bad, and that's we all these Basically. weird upsets. Well, yeah. there, so there was there actually was one issue with the bracket, um, and it's something that Smash GG will not let us fix right now, and it has to do with the way that losers is shuffled coming out of round robin pools. Can you... I mean, people just weren't put where they were supposed to be put. Um, so like, like in a perfect in a perfect or... world. So like there could have been rematches, but um, you'll have you had a bunch of people that had to play in winners round one, right? A lot of people got a buys for winners round one. Sure. Some people had to play whatever. Um, so if you just look at me, like winners round two, I lost. I played Mad Rush, I lost. Losers round one. But if you look at someone, if you look at some other players that lost in winners round two, they drop down to losers round two. They drop down automatically a full round ahead of me, despite losing in the same round of winners. There were some things wait, that, yeah. Did they, did they did they also get a buy or did they play a one first? Uh, I think they also had a buy. There were instances of both, I believe. Okay. So I wasn't it sure was, if it's like on purpose or. I was like, "Hey, Shears, what's up with that?" And he said that it was a Smash GG problem that they wouldn't they wouldn't let him override that kind of stuff. Like it just wouldn't let him. Hmm, that's a little. So weird. I, I didn't notice that. I actually didn't notice that until I was uploading videos and looking at the bracket. Huh, that's that's weird. Yeah, so I mean that's something that hopefully can get fixed in the future because you know Shears. And complains to them all the time, so hopefully that'll get fixed. 
Let's I mean, like, enough. it's like we we laugh about it, but that's not shouldn't happen. We're wrong, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> it's it's really annoying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's mostly just well, I laugh about it because I'm not going to do anything about it. So yeah, so it sucks. <laughs> yeah, just people have just been content with it. So there but was not anymore. There was a rematch that happened. And I don't know if this was... I didn't actually look at the whole Shears' bounty thing, but uh, Narwhal versus Madresh happened. Yes. Oh. See, that that would not have happened. Um, but yeah, Nar- uh, Narwhal Madresh happened, and... First time it happened, Madresh won. Which is like... I the... do want to point out, that was a rematch yeah. from placement pools. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah. Getting a I'm rematch from placement <laughs> pools in D1... Was something that totally was possible. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, that was uh, <laughs> the second happen. time around after Mad Rush. Mad Rush took like one more game and Falcon did us, and, and then Narwhal went Kirby. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? Okay, because it's 2 1 on there. I didn't know that that's what happened. Dang, that's really. Oh, that's weird because usually what happens is like you beat somebody and they're like, oh man, I can't even win this anymore. I have to change characters. And then you'd expect them to not have a competent second yeah. character, but Right. Every once in a while it works out. Kirby. <laughs> yeah, Kirby's too Kirby's too good. <laughs> about that one from last night. Did you can ask me about that from Dude. me and you. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I got a Kirby problem though. I don't know. Have an anybody but Pika problem. Yeah, it's you can go Ness. You could go Fox. <laughs> Can't do it. Uh, yeah. Huh. So let's <laughs> see. What else What else happened? We had Joshi, we had Janko, um, Shalaka, Quapples. What did you guys think about Joshi seeding and how, so how we, he'll be seeded like, in the future? Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously he'll be seeded higher in the future, but he just like didn't have that much to go off of since he got DQ'd from Genesis and he, like, didn't really do much in NorCal. Um, we took advice from some other California people, and he got that's where he got seated. Right. Um, that's then going in. He was seated as like a virtual unknown. Yeah, which is consistent with how we've done seating in the past. Yeah, I mean it's you have to prove yourself like before you get anything. So or Matt, you get the, you get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, exactly. Like him being misseeded. Well, mis- well, that's not even the right thing. But right, it's not he, like he screwed up somebody's tournament because he like dropped some good player down in the losers early. Like it was all still round robin, so everyone got a chance to like. Right. Yeah, I will say that it never felt like. I mean, I didn't get dropped to like say D four or anything like that. But even in D two, I didn't feel like. Like, as somebody who thought, oh, I'm going to make it to D1, I didn't feel like I didn't have, like, it was not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like in, a, in a double elimination, or in most brackets, I'm, like, always on my toes of, like, I could lose who, at any second. Who ended up in your D2 pool? Dude, it was Fastfall or Heaven. It was uh, Narwhal, me, DFX, or Time Machine, or whatever we're calling them now, uh, Rocket, who also played a little bit of... Jigglypuff, that was the only floaty that I saw. Uh, Q and Stu. Jeez, Stu. it was just like Fox Falcon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all over so the I, was, place. <laughs> I was happy. Oh, I guess, I guess uh, DFX went PK against me for one stock, and then he was like, never mind, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so Yeah, he is, he is like a Yoshi, I think. He should have. I love playing. That's like my favorite matchup in the mm, game. I've never seen him play Yoshi. I usually just see him play Falcon and Fox, and then sometimes he busts out the Pikachu. Time. Yeah. The one time I ever played him. Did he? Yeah. He was just trying to style on you. I mean, he was. He lost every game. <laughs> That's the next like, level style. He went like Pika. <laughs> he went like Fox, Yoshi, and Pika, and he lost all three to my Kirby. Yeah, I mean, Kirby usually kind of wrecks, like, low, mid-level Falcons. Yeah. I was most worried about that. <laughs> I suck against Falcon. 
hard matchup, dude. Dude. <laughs> so is this the point of the He's actually episode? pretty good versus Kirby. That, that's kind of surprising now that I think about it. Because he plays a bunch of Kirby's like when he was in New York. Now he's uh in Las Vegas, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. We have I think there's like a there's like a we have to have a token Las Vegas player because we had Hipster and he was the only Las Vegas player. Oh yeah. And then he went to Indiana, so we had to fill that spot. I feel like it's like purgatory. <laughs> Though I guess I don't know enough about purgatory to know if you're only allowed to have one person there at a time. Uh, so we're, are we reaching the point in the episode where we talk about, um, all of my accomplishments and the things that I did well and how great my play was, or is that later on? Um, no, I don't think we do that. (laughs) Actually, we do have (laughs) five more seconds, so I guess you can probably say everything. (laughs) Uh... No, let's talk about... People came out, so we br- briefly mentioned we had... Obviously, we had Alvin, so Peru. We had two Mexican players come out with Marigos and, uh, Marigos and Dexter. Uh, we had Australia come out, um, who did, I think, pretty all right. Um, with James, who was... Who was he main? Because I saw him playing a lot of DK out there. Yeah, I don't know. I saw him playing a lot of DK. It's like DK, Falcon, he probably had somebody else, he probably had a Kirby. And then we had Indefa, who is the... Jigglypuff. Uh, yeah, the Jigglypuff. Who I knew, I mean, we've, we've had him on the show before when talking about, like, BAM and whatnot. Um, so I knew him, I knew him all right. I probably met James, but I don't really remember him from back in the day. But I don't know how well they do. I think they both went D2... Yeah, looks like they both got D2, so they did pretty all right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they both did pretty well in D2. Oh my god, Raichu only got D2 as well. Mm-hmm. And Freehan? Oh, what? So, I don't know if anybody else knows much about Raichu. Uh, plays mostly Ness against me, I've seen, and some Pika. Is that right, though? You probably play him as much as I do. Yeah, he mains Ness, and... So he, I know he like dabbles in other characters, but he definitely mains Ness. Okay, yeah, he was. I, I don't know. I thought that he's been a really, a very good player for the while that I played him. But it, I guess he lost at that CPO and Supa. He's a relatively like new player still. I think maybe like it could just be like tournament nerves or whatever, and he's also yeah, still developing. Yeah, that's reasonable. Oh yeah, this is the pool that he lost in. Death CPO, Supa, GT, Raichu, Reptar, and is that, hold on. Oh, Waxy Joe. I don't know who that is. I thought that was going to be Jay New Money. That's another, like, New York guy. Yeah, what, I think. Yeah, because they have the same, like, pre tag or whatever it is. Um, do you want to talk about streaming? I know that you had some, you had some new stuff on the Yeah, Spurs yeah. Yeah. We're just trying to like kind of step up the game. Um, after Genesis, and we like learned that all of this stuff is done through like HTML and JavaScript. I was like, that I can just have Shears do any idea I have, because um, he, I mean, he really can pretty much program anything we want. So we were just like brainstorming about different things we could do, and we had wanted for a really long time, like well over a year now, to have some kind of a ticker like they have on mm-hmm. sports um, that would pull results from Smash GG. Um, we just ran into some problems with it. Like it, he asked it to do too much, um, so it was like kind of overloaded and it wasn't refreshing properly and all that kind of stuff. But in the future, that's that's going to be definitely a thing we have um, it'll, we'll have like kind of a ticker that displays results um, for like pretty current bracket results. And it did, it had, we have like a breaking news feature where you can like type something in and it'll overwrite the, uh, the ticker and be like breaking news, you know, Quapples advances to D2, uh, like cool stuff like that, that is off stream just to let the viewers know. Um, yeah, that's... We're trying to we're trying to step everything up um, now that we have like gotten our feet wet with some of this some of this new tech. 
you know, I still have I still have no plans to actually like learn how to do real graphic design, but graphics and stuff better also. Yeah, it feels like that's you've somehow gotten into that just because you're like, oh, I need to have stuff. Right, that's pretty much it. Like I watch a lot of other or Mortal Kombat or whatever whatever's on. Um and I just like take bits and pieces from what I see and I'm like, oh man, I really liked what they did there. Um so I basically just try and steal stuff. But like uh, learning learning how to like recreate it all has been fun a, a couple days ago. He's like, How do I make an overlay? I'm like, uh go on YouTube. <laughs> like yeah. that's that's what I do for literally everything. It's like YouTube dad, dude. Like all, but all just the, like more up. people do that, then a lot better stuff. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Um, what's uh so LGBT two? Is that happening? LGB two? Um, yeah, that's gonna happen next year. Oh, I thought it was Let's Go a Baltimore tournament. That's what it was this year. Next oh, year okay. it's just gonna be Let's Go Baltimore two. Okay, and it'll be Let's Go Baltimore three. Exactly, man. We have like we got a couple of years of this. Yeah. Now uh, next year, next year definitely bigger and better. Um, Same side events. Uh, ideally, yeah. Okay. Um, unless we come up with something new by then, but I think these are like pretty standard side events that work well. What's the big what uh big change that you would make? Um. A uh, big change would be venue. Okay. I mean, not uh, sure. No, I just not not even uh, like a, a place where they actually do everything they say they're gonna do. Yeah. Just uh, a place where we have a little bit more freedom to do what we want. Yeah, I will say I will say the fact that it was uh, somebody said this to me. Uh, like, I can roll out of bed, go downstairs, and play some of the best players in the world at this video game. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like that. That's awesome. We definitely want to keep that like, all in one building, kind of a feel to it. Hmm. We definitely uh, like that. We want to keep that. Um, in the like for next year, we might try and make it bigger uh, in a couple different ways, but we'll we'll save that for another time. Sure. Uh, there are definitely plans to do better. Like that. That's the plan. Now, Kevin, what was your experience? Because you've you've been to some local stuff. You were at Super Boom last year. Yeah, uh, I've been to some few things like in New York and Super Boomed. Uh, Let's Go was definitely like the best tournament I've ever been to. Uh, mainly just because, like you guys mentioned, uh, you could just roll out of bed and go play. Uh, I remember one night, I think it was like Saturday night or whatever, I was still playing uh, friendlies at like 5 in the morning. But I was too sweaty, so I literally just took a shower. Like, I went back up to my room, I took a shower, and then I tweeted, like, who wants to play Smash? And it was 5 in the morning on Saturday night. And Andy Kins replied to me, and he's like, here, I'll meet you at the venue if it's still open. So we went, and we literally played from 5 in the morning to 7 in the morning. And then I was like, all right, I got to go to bed because I got to wake up in, like, three hours to play, to play, uh, <laughs> play tournament. So I think that was like the coolest part of the event. Also, yeah, it's it's so convenient. Yeah, it's really convenient, and also I would say the beer on Friday was amazing. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's really cool to just hang out the first day and uh, drink a few beers. I didn't really play like too many matches on Friday. I was kind of just interacting with everyone, and it was a little different from other events I've been to because at other events you're so focused on like getting warmed up and playing, but when you do that type of thing on the first day, you're not so focused on playing the game, but you're more focused on just like meeting all these people that you've never met, which was cool. Yeah, Friday was where I did most of my playing. Like once once Cruz wrapped up, I was like playing friendlies. Um, and then like Joshy showed up at like four in the morning and we just kept playing. And then I was like, oh, I might as well stay up till breakfast. So then around like 6.30, once the waffle thing wasn't working, I was like, all right, I guess I'll go to bed. <laughs> Um, I got back up and at 10, so I had to get back up and get all that going. But like, just being yeah. able to just like go upstairs and like sleep for a few hours and come back down and get breakfast, like it was, yeah, I think it, I got like nine hours. It's so of great sleep. having all one roof. 
I got like nine hours of sleep the whole weekend because I was just like so focused on just like playing. I didn't really care too much about sleep. And one of the nights I actually went back to bed so late that the breakfast was already out. And I (laughs) just, I hit a little bit of cereal and then I went back to bed. Yeah, I actually, uh, Bark and my other brother did it the other day. They just like went downstairs for breakfast and got like a huge plate of stuff and then just like left it up in the room. That's yeah, your brother. Yeah, way. your brother did that because uh, I roomed with him, and he like brought up a bunch of stuff, and he told me yeah. like to have yeah. whatever I wanted. Uh, Mad Mad Rush would do that for us. He did that for us at like Genesis. It was awesome. I think it is really. I don't know. I feel like it's really important because I, I after the tournament, I talked to Shears. Like we brought the TVs back down to where we got them from, uh, so we had like a two hour long conversation just with him, and. Uh, I just like I remember a lot of the things that he was focusing on, uh, just like thoughts afterwards were all like we can have better food or we can do this and do this. And I was thinking like everyone I talked to is just really happy to like go and play some Smash. <laughs> like as long as as long as there's adequate setups to play and there's power in the building that doesn't go off, then I don't know. I feel like that's that's most of the things that that I really yeah, we're just about. we're just always looking to make every single aspect better. So it's not yeah. it's not like we necessarily thought every single thing was bad. We yeah. just know that every single thing could be better. Yeah, yeah that's fair. I think we are. Uh, I feel like. Uh, did you were you gonna close out? I just wanted to say one more thing. No, you yeah, go for it. Hit me All right. It. Yeah, I was just talking with a bunch of people and. I just wanted to see what other people thought of the tournament because I've never been to like a major super room but it's not really a major. It was like close to a major, but it was more like a regional type of thing. So I was asking everyone what they thought. And for the most part, everyone said, well, let's go is probably the best tournament they've ever been to. And I think that if you guys do it again next year, it'll probably be like twice as big maybe. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, that's, that's, that's here's to hoping. I know that there was some advertising that went out uh, like just straight up Facebook tra- traditional advertising, you know, how like people do it in real life. Uh, and I know that we, like the, one of the first people I talked to at the venue uh, was uh, Slats or Kyle. I don't know if you guys met him, but he was like, it's like, oh yeah, this is my first tournament. I'm really excited. I'm like, oh yeah, you see that uh, Facebook ad? And he kind of like looked at me sideways like, uh, yeah, <laughs> how'd you know? <laughs> I'm like, I got you, baby. Don't worry about it. <laughs> But it was, it was good to see that we we're actually having people besides, um, I don't know, finding different ways to get people out here. Because I know that's something that we um, talk about a lot in, like, Illuminati chats and whatnot, of just how do we get people that aren't the people that we normally see. Um, I think, yeah, it's we're trying to keep this, uh, our, this run of the Dreamland a little bit shorter in time each episode because I know that we <laughs> ended up going, like, two hours every time uh last run of it so uh i think it's probably best if we we start to close out uh any last thoughts dark uh last thoughts yeah next year is going to be bigger and better than ever (laughs) awesome um if i if i yelled at you over let's go weekend i'm sorry except for griffith you're really annoying (laughs) (laughs) yeah well he was he was having uh He's having a good time himself, I guess. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Another way to pour it would involve discussing 40 ounces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. I guess I should apologize to anybody that I um, trash talked the crap out of at <laughs> crew battles. Uh, I hope uh, that... me. Yeah, <laughs> cheers, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> I, I made it up though to you at least by coaching you. Uh, this is true, yeah. I'm making you feel like you could do anything. But uh, I was watching uh, the crew battles again, and you can see you. Well, you could see you trying to distract me while I'm playing Revan. Yeah. And I was literally talking to you the whole entire time I was playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. Uh, any last thoughts, Lo? Uh, last thoughts. Um, I hope Shears has enough time to play next time. I didn't get to beat his ass at all. But yeah. We'll be playing friendlies at Snosa since 
<laughs> so if anyone wants to play friendlies with me or shears, just go to Snosa. <laughs> you heard it here. Uh, if you live in New Jersey and you want to play a guy that lives in Baltimore, all you have to do is fly to Southern California. Yep. <laughs> You'd be happy to play, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, uh, that's it for us tonight. Uh, we will tweet out. You guys follow us on Twitter. Uh, find me, obviously, at Manhoney Money. Dark, you can follow him at That's a Dark Horse. Low Power, dude, what's your Twitter? It's, it's something wrong. <laughs> low, low Power SSB. And then, of course, you can follow us at The Dreamland, which is at The Dreamland 64. Uh, We'll tweet out every time that we have stuff coming up. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a strict schedule quite yet, but as soon as we have one, we'll let you know. Uh, and then what's the... Dark, do you remember what I say to close this out? Easy. You said something different every time. It's horrible. Uh, <laughs> we'll uh, catch you next time. Catch you next time on the Dreamland. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>